Happy Thanksgiving. We're breaking down some of the things we're most grateful for from the last year, as well as Mike Trout, live selling, and a whole lot more. We'll discuss it all here on Cards on the Table. Welcome back to Cards on the Table, our fast-paced talk show where we break down a whole myriad of topics, including those provided by you about our wonderful hobby. And today it's Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful full belly of turkey, mashed potatoes, and cheer as we head toward the rest of the holiday season. And I want to let you know, speaking of which, we're bringing back our virtual holiday celebration, our card show. It's on December 5th and 6th. It's going to run from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time. We're giving away over $15,000 in prizes totally for free. Not a bad gig. So you're going to make sure you want to tune in for that. We've got an awesome lineup of guests and giveaways. Make sure you mark your calendars now. And it's Thanksgiving, it's football season. I'm super excited about that. And I'm also super excited to have Carter, who's one of our new guys running the new Cards HQ shop. They've already kind of gotten your hands dirty. You've been out buying a ton. You did a marathon live stream last week, which I want to hear more about in one of our segments. And then we've got Ben. Your last time with us, Ben, this is it. You are, you are leaving for sunnier pastures. That's and true. you're going to stay connected with us. And we're really excited uh, for what's yet to come for you in your career. So... Let's get into some uh, awesome topics here, including our first and main topic here, which is just what are we thankful for in the hobby this last year? This is all personal preference. And I'm going to start with you on this one, Ben. I'm thankful that Jeff has stopped pumping and dumping cards <laughs> and ruining the hobby that I love. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, realistically, I'm, I'm pretty happy that over the last year, the hobby has just been a lot less boring, I suppose. And I say that from a standpoint of I'm glad that places like Tops and Fanatics are at least trying to do stuff that's new. Yeah. Um, you know, in addition, you know, the caveat of like I'm thankful for all of my hobby friends that, you know, like both of them and stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doug and <laughs> yeah. Doug. Yeah, Doug and that's that's it. Um, but in general, I'm I'm excited from strictly a hobby industry standpoint. I'm really excited and thankful that they're trying new things. I know the Taco Fractor didn't go over super well. You know, the Frozen Fractor didn't go over super well. But I'd rather they try something weird than just do nothing. The same old, same old. Yeah, same old, same old. You know, I was actually really excited for, you know, in that same vein, one that I think was a, a, a really nice hit, 2023 archives had like the little vintage lunch lunch boxes okay i think those are super cool mm -hmm. pokemon does that with like little pokeballs and everything from binders to little tins i think the sports card hobby should do more of that and so i'm just i'm excited and thankful that the companies that make our hobby what it is are like taking some chances and doing stuff a little bit differently and hopefully it gets different in a better way yeah. but I at least appreciate that. The Wemby event was a huge hit. Exactly. The MLB debut yeah. patches and the first base patches and yep. other engagements with athletes. Carter, what about you? What are you most thankful for this year? Well, first thing is I'm thankful to be opening a card shop yes. here in early 2024. Right. I mean, we're building out something special here in Atlanta. As you guys know, you guys are a part of it. Uh, but I'm really thankful for all the people I've met in this hobby. I mean, the people I've met at shows, even recently after the card shop announcement, has been incredible. All my friends, fellow dealers that I've met at card shows over the years, I'm very thankful for them and the help that they've given me to get to this point. I'm thankful for the Sports Card Investor team. You guys have been such a big help developing this card shop. Right now, Cards HQ is a small team with Ryan and I, and uh, you know we're, we're growing every day. We're hiring you know, every day, and we're, we're excited for early 2024. Kissing butts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a little list of things here. Let's see. Firstly... I'm really thankful that eBay is moving forward with auto payment options. As a That's seller a on eBay, That's a good somebody who buys, I'm really frustrated by shill bidding and people who try to manipulate things, people canceling. I had a run where I listed like 30 cards and like seven of them just went unpaid. That's very frustrating when you're a seller and there's really no consequences for I didn't that. Wanna, I didn't want to buy those from yeah. you. So like they're implementing the auto, pay, the auto pay options, which is just a really nice change of pace. I know it's not a perfect solution. Uh, maybe some people are frustrated by it. There's surely going to be some kinks to work out with it, but I, I do think it's the right direction. Something a little unique here. I'm thankful for Patrick Mahomes, and not because I'm a Chiefs fan, but for the hobby's sake. And the reason I say that is football's been brutal. Ultra-modern quarterbacks, injuries, busts, letdowns, inconsistency. 
Patrick Mahomes, when all the things in the stormy seas has been a constant, he's had his moments. He's, he's had more turnovers this year than what we've come, uh, become accustomed to. The Chiefs are majorly struggling with drops like we saw on Monday Night Football. Yeah. But Mahomes is sort of carrying the ultra-modern football hobby, in my opinion. I'm thankful for everybody who watches our content. Uh, especially the market movers videos, you know, that I do as well as this, but all of our content, it's been awesome getting to interact with so many of you and our market mover members at card shows. That's one of the things that I always leave card shows going, this is just great. It's very rejuvenating. I'm thankful that the new location of Cards HQ, where our offices will be, is much closer to my house. My brutal Atlanta <laughs> commute will now be less than half of what it has been. I'm with you there. So I'm very excited about <laughs> spending more time in the office, more time in a card shop, and finally, I'm thankful to have been working on the Dummies book with you, sir. Yeah, it's been a I great partnership. Um, we're really excited about that opportunity. You can pre-order it now, Sports Card Collecting and Investing for Dummies, featuring ourselves as well as Mr. Jeff Wilson. So check that out. Really excited about that opportunity. And speaking of exciting opportunities, Pristine Auction, we've always got some great items from them. But they're doing something a little extra special for everybody this week. Mm -hmm. It's Black Friday. Tomorrow it's Black Friday. And they've got some deals. There's a mouthful here. First of all, if you register, and make sure to use code SCI when you register to get $10 right out of the chute, use that code when you register. But in addition to that, anybody who signed up with an account on Pristine on Black Friday will get an additional $25 credit for free deposited into their account for any 10-minute auctions on Black Friday. So you get to use that. They run these very fast-paced 10-minute auctions. Great opportunity to find some deals. Secondly, if you win an item in one of those 10-minute auctions, you'll get another $25 credit redeemable between December 14 and 21. So basically 50 bucks just for signing up on the website. And then each bid you place in those 10 minute auctions as well as their Black Friday featured auctions will get you entered into other exclusive getaways. So that's a lot, a lot of really cool things going on. Yep. And one really cool thing I spotted on their elite auction, which is ending in just a few days, there's a Steph Curry signed Mitchell and Ness custom framed pre-LED backlit with like a signed replica rookie. It's got some autos. It's really, it's a sharp looking display piece for anybody who's a Curry fan. Yeah. We got your answer. So this is one that you'd probably like. A Mahomes 2020 mm. Optic downtown mm. PSA 10. It's, you know, right after the Super Bowl. He's, you know, got yep. his hands up in oh, the yeah. air. Um, and then another one that I was looking at, 1954 Sports Illustrated number one. It's a CGC 9.4, wow. and then for us Atlanta folks, uh, the guy taking the at-bat on the cover, Eddie Matthews. Nice. Very, very cool piece. Very special piece. Talk about two different things, too, with Mahomes and the 54 SI. Yep. Go to pristineauction.com, register, use code SCI, and get 10 bucks plus the $25 credit and start bidding on Friday. Don't miss that. All right, I did a data dive this last week, hopefully a little less controversial than two weeks ago when I stirred the pot and got everybody mad. Uh, about some of my hot takes and things that I don't like as much as others, shifted gears and gave six things that I like maybe more than others. And quickly, I said I like going down the rabbit hole and just the discovery process of finding new cards. I like cards in magnetic one touches. I like Topps Dynasty, Stadium Club, Inception. You could throw Court Kings into that mix, which I didn't mention. SP image variations, 90s parallels. And then I said I really like collect, uh, passionate collector posts on Instagram, just when people tell the story about why they found this card or how their, what their journey was, as well as many unique and eclectic things. Carter, what do you like in the hobby that maybe others aren't as enthusiastic about? I'm a really big fan of action shot pictures, so I'm with you on Stadium oh, Club. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I like cards that are like, you know, maybe throwing a football, yeah. pitching, whatever. Like Prism, I like, I like those cards. I like the backgrounds of those cards, but usually they're kind of basic poses, right? They're yeah. more natural. That's right, rookie like, photo shoot. Yep, yeah. so I, I like I like in-action pictures. That that really fires me up. That's what I collect. Um, I also like kind of oddball cards or maybe like off-sport crossover cards. Like there's some Michael Jordan golf cards out there from mm -hmm. Upper Deck, yeah. right, 1994. There's also Russell Wilson Bowman Chrome. There's Tim Tebow Bowman Chrome cards. You know, I'm not giving Jeff a shout out with the Gators here, but <laughs> I like those cards. They're fun. So uh, th those are kind of things that I like that are a little bit different than most collectors may not. Yeah, that's. I think it's really great when you can find something a little more unique, niche, eclectic, and carve out a little spot for yourself, having maybe a little less competition than all the mainstream stuff. Yeah. What are you after, sir, that uh, people might scratch their heads at? Honestly, one of my favorite things to buy is actually collegiate cards. You know, when, when the draft picks cards come out, I know a lot of the hobbies like, who's buying this? 
sorry, it's it's me. And it's just specifically, I'm a Syracuse guy. I like buying players in their Syracuse uniforms. It actually matters to me. So all of the collegiate products are nice. Um, thinking about what I'm thankful for over the last year, Bowman University getting a really big upgrade over the last year has been really, really nice. I've been having a ton of fun being able to collect guys like Sean Tucker or uh, Aronde Gadsden. And then I've been able to take that to a new level of, of looking at just their orange and blue refractors to then color match. And so it's sort of rainbow chasing without trying to find a hundred different parallels to a certain extent. And so I've spent probably 90% of my purchases recently have been on collegiate cards. Um, and then outside of that, I'm actually a big fan of the minis. Um, I just love the the visual aspect that you get with like T206s. Yeah. So when the T, you know, when the 206 sets come out, even if it's like Star Wars or something like that, I like picking those up. I like the Allen and Ginter minis. I like the Allen and Ginter mini stained glass cards. Yeah, those are really cool. Um, those are really nice. I, I just think they have incredible eye appeal. The fact that it doesn't take up the entire slab, I think is really interesting. Um, and then as always, my favorite set, I've said it a bunch of times on this show, Spectra. It's mm. like Prism, but good. <laughs> it's like Prism, <laughs> but good. I love the, the design aesthetic of Spectra cards. One thing I've realized is that I don't always love thick cards. I actually wish yeah. Spectra were just 35 point, maybe 100%. 55 point, because then you can put them into a binder. They're just a little easier to store. I understand it feels like a more premium card stock, but I, I wonder if that's not one of the reasons it deters mm. some people from collecting yeah. it. Uh, lots of really, really unique things uh, out there for all of us. We'd like to hear from you down in the comments as well, what types of unique things you collect. Let us know if you're over on Instagram and we can follow you there. And uh, make sure to check out that data dive video. And speaking of the Market Movers channel, you got to check out this ad. Okay, guys and gals, you're going to want to go to marketmoversapp.com and use promo code THANKS. This is our Black Friday sale coupon code for Thanksgiving this weekend, code THANKS, T-H-A-N-K-S, and you're going to get 30% off any one of our annual plans. That's a great deal. You can download it, use the mobile version, use the web version, tons of data at your fingertips. Don't miss out on that opportunity. We're switching gears to our mailbag topics, and these are always the questions that we love hearing from you. Leave us your questions down in the comments or send them to us on Instagram. And our first topic is, what are our thoughts on live selling, on the live selling experience, on live selling comps in particular? And what's really unique, we've seen this, you were just part of this and I wanna hear about that. When you watch live selling, if you participate in it, the cards can sell for values all over the place. It's a bit of the wild, wild west compared to just shopping on eBay or in a card show. It's time bound, it's fast paced, it's fun, it's exhilarating. And the prices for cards can go double what a comp does or half of what a comp does. It's kind of all over the place. So there can be deals to be had. Uh, and some people are wondering, you know, should those comps be considered when you're looking at the value of cards just for everyday, you know, fixed price selling or, or offering prices on cards online? Uh, what are your thoughts overall, Ben, on the live selling experience and specifically on those comps and how they kind of play into to price consideration? I think it's a really intriguing question because the fact that somebody bought bought it, paid for it, makes it a legitimate comp. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, high or low outliers and things of that nature. And I think a lot of people go to shows and may say, well, this was a this was a high or low outlier. Does it really reflect the the overall market of this card, taking into consideration that maybe uh, it was a hotly contested auction that ended in, in a prime slot? Maybe it was a card that ended a little bit low because the auction ended at five o'clock in the morning. I think those are all valid. I almost think that live selling stuff, when we think about it going into a tool like Market Movers, I almost think we need to be more granular about how these, these individual sales are labeled in terms of like, do you want to sort it by auctions, you know, or like high-end auction houses, marketplaces, live selling. So when people initially get in there, they can see everything, but you might want to take out the stuff that falls within those live selling platforms. And the thing is, people get a little rowdy with some of those communities. Yeah. And, 
you know, they're, they're buying cards that often aren't, they, they know aren't any, anywhere remotely close to the true market of that card, but you're a little rowdy, you're in there, you're in this room with your friends and you're having a good time and people are getting excited and you're going to do some stupid stuff. You know, we see this with like the video game community where people, you know, donate thousands of dollars to, to these content creators. Yeah. I think the sales are legitimate, but we have to add additional context yeah. to why those sales got a little a little wonky. They're real, but there's They're additional good. yeah, there's context that has yeah, to be added. That, good points. And what was that marathon that you did last week with Jeff like? What's your experience been with live selling? Well, it's unreal. I'm still re recovering a little bit from <laughs> it, right? But uh, you know, I think I saw a lot of cards go for over what we were asking to buy now, and then I saw a lot of cards go well under. Yeah. So it was kind of 50-50 in a way, and I, I haven't dove into the analytics just yet. I, I started doing that this morning. Um, but for me, I like it. I think it's intriguing, like Ben said, but I think there's so many factors that aren't taken into account. You got viewership numbers to yes. take into account. You got following, right? Like, I mean, cards on us, like we like we were selling 500 cards. There's not a lot of sellers that can sell 500 cards in an evening or in one show like we did the other night. So I think that's the most, that's the toughest part of kind of focusing on having live sales be comps. Yeah, uh, so quick, some quick points. That was one of the things I had written down. Should they be included in sales data? It, maybe it would be nice for visibility, but the, those prices are gonna be highly anomalous. Like you said, it has a lot to do with how many people are on the stream. Uh, people kind of put into that time cooker and just sort of pressured to make a decision without those. That does bring up an interesting thing though, that's like, what would happen? We saw at the National in Atlantic City, people couldn't get comps because their phones didn't have service. And so all of a sudden, all that data goes out the window and it becomes a little bit more of a pure experience of, I don't know, how much does this card mean to me? You know, it doesn't yeah. become as much about what everybody else thinks about it uh, as much as that. Now, last thing I'll say quickly, I like it when sellers, and I didn't get a chance to tune into you and Jeff, it was my wife's birthday when you guys were running that stream. I do like it when sellers can add some context and really talk to the card, to right. the design, to the athlete, yeah. something. I was watching a live stream last week, and this guy had a Peyton Manning card, and he just kept going, we got a little man-man here, little man-man, little Peyton man-man, just filling 30 seconds with words, they're words, yeah. <laughs> sort of, but it doesn't actually add any value. And yeah. I'd rather him just sit there silently with the card on the screen than, than make that kind of sound. So live selling, let us know down in the comments. Do you do it? Do you like it? What do you think of the data points? Last topic, very specific one here, Mike Trout. What do we think the expectations are for Mike Trout's market going forward? We heard the rumors. They kind of agreed to potentially let him seek a trade. There should be teams interested, although he's you know he's got a big contract. Uh, they'd have to move some pieces. His 2011 tops up uh, tops update PSA 10. This is a card that once topped out at nearly 8k, and consistently did about 1.8k or better for 28 months or so. Now down, hovering around a thousand dollars. He hasn't had postseason success. Carter, what do you expect from Trout's market going forward? Could it you know could we see a bump if he gets traded? What do you think about it? Well, I think if he gets traded, I think it's going to go bonkers. I think for me personally, so my experience is not too much in data like you guys have focused in, right? Because I've been, my experience in this business has been buying cards and moving them in a quick fashion. Yeah. So my market experience is more on hype, right? And so I think hype will drive his prices. Now, will they get, will that type of card get back to $8,000? Most likely. Yeah. No. no, I don't think it'll get even close. But I do think he becomes a more liquid in the market. I think you see a lot more of his cards selling. I think you see a lot more cards available for you to purchase and even still win on in the short term. I think depending on the team that he goes to, just the sliver of a better chance of him making it to October yeah. really makes an impact on his market for really the whole year of 2024 almost. I think just him making it to the postseason is going to add so much to his legacy because he just hasn't yet. It, that just hasn't been a part of his legacy. Yeah. I think the trade at least would cause a temporary bump in his prices. Yeah. There's rumors that the Dodgers are interested in both he and Shohei Otani, which I think would just be cool for them to go to the same team again and to stay together. That would be a really cool storyline. I think line. that'd be really annoying as a Braves <laughs> fan. So. Yeah, I guess we'll maybe. We'll take them both here. I guess right? maybe. Yeah. We, 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 maybe. Yeah. Uh, ben, what do you think about this? So I completely understand the initial bump. We can we can anticipate that. But to be honest, I think some of the championship stuff is cooked into those prices. Mm -hmm. He has been largely so much more expensive for that type of card, like the 2011 Tops update. I think... That is at eighteen hundred dollars or even a thousand dollars. That is a really expensive price point for that type of card, yeah. and so I have serious concerns about how much higher that could go. I think a lot of people have come around to the idea that 
he's been in a dumpster fire for a really long time, unfortunately. How good he is as a player is established. I think most people can objectively say Mike Trout is arguably the most talented and gifted baseball player of all time, one of the best ever. And is it really his fault that the rest of the team stinks year after year? Is it really his fault that they're not making the playoffs year after year? And it's not exactly apples to apples, but a good litmus test for this. Damian Lillard got the bump when he went to the Bucks, and his cards have already trickled back down. Yeah. You know, the reality is just that his market is what it, you know, was what it was. We all acknowledge how good he was. Mm -hmm. And if he wins a championship, I think largely that's cooked in to a lot of these players already. Baseball is an interesting sport because it tends to be a lot more about the individual stats and accolades, especially yeah. regular season stats that accrue more than the postseason success. I think what would really help move the needle is if Mike Trout can stay healthy for a season, and that's my yep. big concern. If he can't play even 100 games, let alone close to a full season, that's been the big problem. He is the best player of his generation, no doubt about it. He's put up historic numbers. Uh, he's a fantastic player, but he's got to be able to stay healthy and mm -hmm. to play. Uh, you know, otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen with his cards long term. I will say the postseason thing is interesting. Corey Seager's a great example, one of two players now with Reggie Jackson to have won a World Series and a World Series MVP with two different teams. Yeah. And his stats are nearly identical to Mr. October. I don't know how many people remember remember Corey Seager for being a playoff great. If he keeps running great stats, they might. Trout's got the best stats, but he needs to be able to play for his cards to do anything going forward. That does it for this week's episode of Cards on the Table. We always appreciate you tuning in, as I said in that opening segment. Make sure to download the Market Movers app and go to Pristine Auction to get that $10 credit with code SCI plus $25 plus another $25 if you bid on those 10-minute auctions. Thanks so much for watching. Happy investing. Keep on collecting and make sure to have fun.